I could never be friends with a shrimp. They're so shellfish. Boom. So good to see you again. Here we are. I'm excited about today's lesson. It is called Active and Passive Voice. Uh, this is a fun one. I have a very active voice, but I tend to write in passive voice. I want to know what you do. Let's take a look. Open your textbook. This little guy right here. Pause if you need to get there. Well, here you are. Go ahead and hide that image. Top right. Clickety click. There it goes. All right. We have finished making meaning. We're done with that. Language development, we're almost done with. We did these three in the last lesson, concept vocabulary, word study, and word network. Today we're working on conventions, and we will have our handy-dandy Easter egg, as always. Now, click on conventions with me. Language development, conventions. We're going to talk about verbs today. So if you do not know what a verb is, uh, please go back to first grade. Please, please. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Look, like, I forget it sometimes, too. You need to look it up. At this point, this is one of those things that, like, if you don't know what a noun is or a verb or an adverb, you need to you need to spend some time looking it up, okay? Okay? You need to know this. Like, you need to know this by now. So if you really have no idea what I'm talking about when I say noun and verb, pause the video and go do that, okay? Okay. So we're going to talk about um, special types of verbs, constructions, sentence constructions using verbs. And we have active voice and passive voice. So there's a lot to read on this lesson because this concept is kind of tricky to understand, but it really does make a difference. Um, and I will show you some examples here. I really think the best way to do this is to show you some examples and talk you through them. And then you can go back and read the text if you still have questions or need help clarifying it. So the very, very basic here is uh, looking here. It says verbs in active and passive voice. A verb is a word that expresses action or the existence of a state or condition. The existence of, I don't even know what the existence of a state or condition means. Like, we're going to just call it an action for now. Okay. Okay, it's important to learn to use active and passive voice of verbs in your writing. Hmm, this word important, they're not kidding. It means important. It, it's a big deal. It's important to learn to use active and passive voice of verbs in your writing. Sweet. So let's see the basics of what these are. The voice of a verb, ooh, I can click this. Yep, I can get more information. So if you need more information, click here, please. The goal of today's lesson is for you to understand whatever it takes. Read. Read about it. Watch another YouTube video. There are better teachers than me on YouTube. Not going any there. Okay, so here we go. The voice of a verb shows whether the subject of the verb is performing the action or receiving it. What? The subject of the verb is performing the action or receiving it? I don't know what that means. I mean, I do. I'm your teacher, but I'm pretending like I don't. So let's look at what this means. The subject of the verb is performing the action or receiving it. So I'm going to show you a cool little thing I did. These are two very beautifully, beautifully constructed sentences, okay? Mr. Fairber ate special Chinese soup or... The special Chinese soup was eaten by Mr. Fairber. Now, I know the words are in a different order, but are these basically saying the exact same thing? I mean, yeah. Basically, it's saying the same thing. If I read the first one to you, you picture me eating soup. If I read the second one, you picture me eating soup. And those of you who have heard the stories, you know what kind of soup I'm talking about. It was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I don't regret it. I maybe regret it a little bit. So, um, let's just say I'm a dog lover. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, Mr. Faber ate special Chinese soup. 
special Chinese soup was eaten by Mr. Faber. So here we have uh, something unique going on. We have a sentence that means, two sentences mean basically the same thing, but one is written in active voice and one is written in passive voice. The key to figuring out which is which is we have to identify the subject of the sentence and the verb of the sentence. Now, if you remember diagramming sentences, this whole thing right here with the subject here and the verb here, and then any like object comes over here, the object, and then there's like what adjectives come off this way, another adjective off. Okay, hopefully you remember all this. So that's what we're talking about, subject and verb. So let's look at this sentence. Mr. Ferber ate special Chinese soup. What's my subject here? But it's, it's Mr. Faber. It's me. And what is the verb of the sentence? What's the action? Eight. Okay, this is the verb. This is what's happening. What's the object? The object of the sentence is special Chinese soup. Well, we should do the squigglies around. There you go, special Chinese soup. What about this sentence? What's the subject of this sentence? The special Chinese soup was eaten by Mr. Faber. Oh, uh, yep, here's my subject. The special Chinese soup was eaten is my verb. And the object is Mr. Faber. And you're like, what's the big deal? Active versus passive. Well, let's look back at our description. The voice of a verb shows whether the subject of the verb is performing the action or receiving it. So the verb has a subject. So ate. Ate what? Boom. Was eaten. Was eaten by who? This. So look. I will simplify this. Mr. Faber is the subject here. Ate. Is Mr. Faber doing the eating or is Mr. Faber being eaten? Well, obviously, Mr. Faber is doing the eating. And what is being eaten? The special Chinese soup is being eaten. Okay? So what this is called, the subject of my sentence is doing the verb. So Mr. Faber is doing the eating. So this is called active because I am actively, actively doing something. Active. This is an active voice. I am doing something. I'm the hero of this sentence. But let's look at this one. The special Chinese soup was eaten. So is the special Chinese soup eating Mr. Faber or is it being eaten by? Yeah, it's being eaten by. So it actually goes this way. Was eaten what? The Chinese soup was eaten. Hmm. Mr. Faber? Yeah. Mr. Faber is doing the eating. Okay. Here we have something called passive voice. That means the subject of the sentence, this um, special Chinese soup as the subject, it's not doing anything. It's doing nothing. It's instead receiving an action. Whereas Mr. Faber here is doing the eating, I'm actively doing something. This one is passive. It's like when you're playing Uno and you pass, you're like, pass, you do nothing. Passive, it's just like, meh doing nothing. So this is called passive. Okay? It's receiving. Wee, that's not too bad. So this the subject of the sentence is receiving the action, it's passive, versus doing the action, it's active. This type of sentence is way better usually. Way better. It just puts things in control and it flows better and it doesn't sound so weak and lame. These ten sentences usually sound kind of lame. They sound kind of weak and lame. You can use them if you're trying to have a certain effect. And we'll see in the story, our author uses passive voice for a certain effect. But we typically don't want to do this. So let's go back. Um, so let's continue reading here. The voice of a verb shows whether the subject of the verb is performing the action or receiving it. A verb is in the active voice when its subject performs the action. So, Mr. Faber ate. I was performing the eating, so it's active voice. A verb is passive voice when its subject receives the action. 
So I'm not going to read through all of this for you, but I do want you to look at this activity. This is very similar to what I just showed you. Here's active voice. Here's passive voice. We filled the bucket versus the bucket was filled. Same thing here. Allison is winning the race. The race is being won by Allison. So is the race doing anything? Nope. It's Allison who's doing it. So this is passive voice. Allison is winning the race. Is Allison doing anything? Yeah, she's winning the race. It's active. Hopefully this makes sense to you. So um, just read over this section. I agree with this. I did already talk about this, though. But we're going to skip down here where it says read it. Read it. Identify whether each sentence uses active or passive voice. That's what you're going to do. So you'll open up this little notebook here, boink, and you can write A, B, and C, A, B, and C. And go ahead and identify whether this sentence is active or passive, active or passive, active or passive. Pause it here and get that done. Okay, you are back. You have finished active and passive. And uh, let's look at number two. Number two says, read paragraph 64 of the medicine bag. Mark and then label one example of passive voice and one of active voice. Mr. Fair, Mr. Faber, how do I know if it's in how do I know? Hey, if the sentence has a verb, which every sentence has a verb, it can't be a verb. Unless, it can't be a sentence unless there's a verb. Every single sentence is either written in either passive or active. Every single sentence ever written since the history of the world began is either active or passive. It's one or the other. It's like, is a number even or odd? Well, it's, it's, it's either one. <laughs> any number. Pick any number. It's either even or odd. That's exactly what this is. It's going to be active or passive. So paragraph 64. Come down. Here we go. Oh, good. It's a nice big paragraph. I'm going to identify uh, an active or passive. So let's look at this very first one. He carefully prepared for his quest with a purifying sweet bath, and then he went alone to find a high butte top to fast and pray. So who's the subject? He. Yep. He is the subject. Or I'll go green. What did he do? He carefully prepared. Did he do anything or was the preparation happening to him? He did it. So this is what? Active. So this is an example of active. Um, you could do that. This says mark and label. I like it just to, if you can, I don't know if you can copy and paste the sentence. Can you do it? Control C. Control V. Nope. Okay, you may not be able to copy and paste this. Oh, that's, that's, uh, too bad. But, um, mark and then label. Let's do this. Mark and then label. So, uh, I will highlight this sentence. Doop. And I will label it right here. Active voice. I'll make it blue. Or maybe I'll underline it. Let's underline it in blue. I like that. Okay, so now I have a label, and you'll see the label is here. Click, active voice. So go ahead and label some sentences here. Make sure, it could be one and one. You know, one passive, one active. Go ahead and pause here, and get that done. Boop. All right, welcome back. Let's continue with this exercise. Write it. Revise each sentence to use the active voice. You're going to make it have the active voice. I do hope you notice that I am highlighting the important parts of these prompts. You should do that on tests, really. Do it on tests. Do it on activities. Do it on your math homework. Highlight the important stuff. You, it's too much to think about to keep it all in your head. Just highlight as you go. So, an example. Grandpa was brought to Martin's neighborhood by the bus. Grandpa is the subject. Was brought the verb and the object to Martin's neighborhood by the bus so look subject grandpa was brought 
Is Grandpa doing anything here? Nope. He's receiving the bringing. Like, the bus is what's working. The bus is doing the bringing. So this is passive. So we're going to switch this to active. So we switched it to the bus, because the bus is the one doing the bringing. The bus brought. Now the bus is actually doing something. This is active voice. I want you guys to go ahead and work on these problems right here in your notebook. Open each notebook and rewrite each sentence. Pause here and come back when you're done. You got this. Well done. That was it. Easter egg. I forgot. Let me think about it for a second. Okay, I've got it. I want you guys to act like there was no Easter egg today. Just walk up to me and say, Mr. Fairbrow, I couldn't find the Easter egg in the video. And then I'll know that you watched this to the end. <laughs> Do it. Just so walk up and say, Mr. Faber, I, I couldn't I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the Easter egg, Mr. Faber. Was, we'll have an understanding. Man. See you guys later. Bye.